Hi, I'm Catherine Cheney, a senior reporter at DevX, and I'm thrilled to be moderating this conversation on health tech startup founders and the role that they are playing in global health, in SDG targets for health. And joining me today, we have Adebayo Alonge. He's co-founder and CEO of RxAll, which has a proprietary AI platform to address drug counterfeiting. And Daisy Iziaho, co-founder and chief product officer for Zuri Health, which is a mobile health service that serves as a virtual health assistant to its users. Thank you both so much for taking the time to join us. So first, um, I know this is uh, something health tech startup founders are very used to, kind of just giving me the quick pitch, but I would love to hear a little bit more. I just gave a preview really of uh, your organization, where you're based, uh, when you launched, what you do, and um, I really like to push, uh, especially tech startup founders on how you do it, not just the technology, but the approach that you take in, in your work. So um, we'll start with Daisy, if that's all right. Hello, thank you so much, Catherine, for having me today and giving me the opportunity to actually share with the audience about who we are and what we do at Zuri Health. So at Zuri Health, we are building an all-inclusive mobile health solution to be able to provide affordable and accessible healthcare solution for all. So we founded Zuri Health early this year in January at the peak of COVID-19 pandemic. And our journey at Zuri Health started with a vision, a vision for quality, affordable and accessible healthcare solution for all. So basically it's because millions of people in Africa do not have access to quality medical care. And we find that there is a lot of challenge that Sub-Saharan Africa is facing in terms of the cost of getting medical health care, the time to get the ad inadequate accessibility to quality medical care, and also the distribution challenge where we find that most doctors are particularly con congested or like the, or what, how do I put it? They're like grouped in one city and we find that other towns lack uh, doctors. So we find that people have to travel long distance just to get quality medical care. And this leads to expensive and inconvenient mobile, uh, ex expensive and inconvenient hospital trips for small or minor prescriptions. So simply, Zuri Health is a mobile app that helps patients across sub Saharan Africa to find and book certified healthcare services based on availability, location, and spe specialization of the provider. Our aim is to provide affordable and accessible healthcare solution. And simply through our app, patients can chat and consult with a doctor. They can book medication from pharmacies. They can book labs and diagnostic tests and have a doctor visit them at home. Our aim is to build a product that will bridge that gap by having an all-inclusive mobile health solution in one platform. We also help doctors, pharmacies, and labs in diagnostic centers to tap into a wider market of on-demand patients and earn extra income while saving lives. So we find that this way, the challenge of self-quarantine is eased by minimizing movement and limiting interaction. So you can call it a virtual hospital. Thank you, Daisy. And yes, your, your model certainly lent itself to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we'll get back to really what that has meant for you in a moment. But um, Adebayo, I would love to hear a little bit more about RxAll. And again, I gave just a preview, but more on um, your company, your mission, and, and how you do what you do, even beyond the technology. Yeah, so RxAll is a platform that builds AI for authenticating drug quality. And we are headquartered in the US as well as in Nigeria with um, ongoing plans of expanding into seven other African countries in the coming months. Um, what we have developed is really addressing the issue of poor access to high quality medicines across Africa. We do know that from the numbers, more than 30% of medicines in across the continent are substandard and falsified. And many times it leads to over 100,000 people on the continent dying from this problem. So what we have done at RxOl is really to build out an AI system that uses hardware, and mobile apps, and a cloud-based infrastructure to enable pharmacy sellers authenticate batches of the medicines that they get before they actually resell it. And we've gone a further mile 
to build a marketplace infrastructure around these sellers. So it is now easy for hospitals, pharmacies, and patients to find high quality sellers on our platform and order for the medicines that they need, either for home delivery or for self pickup um, at those sell seller partners. So um, our mission really is to make sure that no one dies from falsified medicines or substandard medicines anywhere across Africa. Thank you, Adebayo. And we'll, we'll get back to, um, in just a moment, what really what COVID-19 has meant for this space, um, which I know is, is actually something I was less familiar with uh, uh, until preparing for this session and reading more about counterfeit medicines in the context of COVID-19, and it's fascinating. But first, I want to go to Daisy. So Daisy, you are based in Nairobi, which uh, has a huge number of health tech startups. Um, it's a very vibrant startup ecosystem, health tech startup ecosystem. You're also working in you know, virtual healthcare, mobile healthcare, which is a very crowded space, I would guess even more so, um, given the way COVID-19 has really accelerated innovation in this space. So my question for you is, what has your journey as a startup looked like since the onset of COVID-19? And, and what have you done to really distinguish yourself from all the other players in what, again, seems like a very crowded space? So what we do or what we decided to do at Zui Health was to build a product for Africans by Africa. And what I mean by Africa, we see that most of the companies, the telehealth companies are building products for users who have mobile phones and particularly smartphones. But we went back and thought about if you're trying to solve a problem for Africa, who is actually in need for these healthcare services? And we found that most of the people in need of healthcare services are the undeserved population, those people who are not able to afford healthcare. So at Zuri Health, we decided to innovate the SMS service for solution where we, we take into cognizance Africa's unique challenges and offer first level medical consultation via SMS service. So this is to cater for the 65% of the population who do not have access to, the, to internet or do not have smartphones. And you find that from as low as five Kenyan shillings, a, a, a woman or a lady or any person living in rural areas is able to get first level medical consultation and chat with a doctor. That is how we are trying to like bridge a gap. As much as you're trying to solve healthcare solution using tech, we need to find ways in which we are able to provide solutions for the people who are us, who is surrounding us, the Africans. So yeah, that's how we, what about it? Yeah, that's great to hear. And I wonder if you can expand on because you are focused on this population that a lot of other companies tend to overlook. They're, for example, focused on smartphones. What has that meant for your business model? Can you tell me a little bit more about how you're structured and how that enables you to serve this population that might be left out in a model that just focuses on smartphones? Yes, so what we decided to do is to work with partners. So we are partnering with a lot of healthcare providers and aggregating them into the mobile app. So if it's a pharmacist, if it's the labs and diagnostic centers, the doctors, we are partnering with them and listing them on our platform to be able to provide the services to people who can actually book virtually and engage and connect with them. So this way, if I'm a user at home and the, the risks, or I want to have the convenience of having my drug delivered to my house simply by going through the Zuri Health app I'm able to buy an order for medication through the, the app I can book for labs and diagnostic tests currently we see a lot of people doing COVID-19 tests and especially travelers because it's mandatory for travelers to book for or have COVID-19 tests so we see that a lot of people are actually booking for COVID-19 tests and requesting for someone to come and take their lab sample pickup from the convenience of their home, office, or, or wherever they are, and they get results in six hours' time. So there's that aspect of convenience and cost. And in terms of the doctor-patient interaction, we see that a lot of the population is now open to e-visits and e-consultations because this saves time and is actually more convenient. You don't have to 
stay in long traffic just to go and book for a doctor appointment or you know have multiple bookings you can just from the same app and one app which is all inclusive chat with the doctor the doctor gives you prescription from the app from the same same app you can order the medication you're requested to buy on or take and book tests from the same app so that's how we're trying to make it as convenient as possible and as affordable as possible so we, we do this by partnering with this government approved and licensed providers Thank you, Daisy. And Adebayo, I wonder if you can tell me, how has the conversation changed on the problem you're trying to solve? Counterfeit medicines, fake drugs. What did that conversation look like in, say, early 2020 versus early 2021, looking ahead to early 2022? How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the conversation um, in terms of the problem you're trying to solve? Yeah, so there is more global awareness and urgency around the problem, especially with all the seizures of substandard falsified vaccines in, across the world. So we've had those seizures happen in Mexico, in Poland, in South Africa. And so it's brought it more to the fore. You know, it, before it used to be like, hey, this is distant problem that only affects Africans or Southeast Asians. Uh, but now people actually realize it's not just a, an issue that is for the global south. Uh, the cartels literally are latching on into any opportunity in the drug supply chain. And so when the COVID vaccines came out and there was an opportunity there, they simply took the skill set they have developed in the traditional pharma industry and applied the same to duplicate and falsify uh, COVID vaccines. So there's been more interest. There's been... Uh, especially around what we're doing. And we've seen that interest in a lot of inbound orders for our RX scanner product and also even with investment as well. That's great to hear. There's more awareness and recognition of the issue. I want to zoom in on the issue of trust. And so we heard about this a little bit earlier. Um, and I want to begin my question with trust as a starting point, because I feel like I, I tune into way too many technology sessions that kind of culminate in uh, this consensus that trust matters. It's not just technology, but it's trust. But let's use that as a starting point for this question. So we've acknowledged that trust matters when it comes to these health tech startups, building relationships, forging new partnerships, entering new markets. So how does trust play into what you do? Can you expand on how you've actually forged that trust as part of your model? Maybe we'll start with Daisy. So this is actually a very good and interesting question because a lot of our users are always concerned about the trust and even their own privacy when engaging with doctors or ordering for medication and just accessing or acquiring healthcare through the app. So what we have done is we have ensure that our app is end-to-end -end encrypted. So whatever consultation or messages that go on between the patient and doctor interaction is fully encrypted. And the patient is, uh, is aware that all this information is private between them and the doctor. And also they have the opportunity to actually store their medical records and have them in store and safe in one, uh, in one app. So I think that's how we managed to do that. And we also work with governments. I mean, when you're operating under health tech, especially in Africa, you have to be licensed, you have to be regulated, you have to have the right certifications. So the fact that we are also licensed to operate is one of the trusts uh, we earn from the users. They, they know that we are licensed to operate. That's why. Thanks, Daisy. I'm glad you touched on trust with your uh, customer base and trust with governments as well. Adebayo, what about you? How do you build trust into what you do? Yeah, so in terms of our trust, it's really uh, focused on our seller partners as well as the um, government regulators. And on the seller partner side, uh, part of what we've done around that is really helping them understand our credibility. So things related to licensing and certifications for the testing device, uh, the CMAC, ISO certifications. Uh, those are things, for example, that we show to get them comfortable with using it for drug testing. Uh, we also show how it's been used by large pharmaceutical companies, as well as um, even their own country regulators uh, to secure the supply chain. And then lastly, um, just making it very clear to them that we're here to stay. So um, supporting them with 
um, financing, for example, um, with um, business training to improve uh, their cash flow and their profitability. Um, on the regulatory side, it's compliance with the regulatory requirements and constant communication. Uh, we also provide training as well on an ongoing basis um, to enable them use our platform. And then data sharing, you know, um, giving them access to information as to what we're seeing, as to where poor quality medicines are showing up across those various markets. So um, this is how we've gone about building trust in our ecosystem. Great points. And I think it's so key to really uh, assure your partners you're here to stay. And I think that's really where the lack of trust um, kind of stems from because people aren't so sure because they've seen far too many examples of health tech startups that come and go. So thank you both so much for sharing the work that you're doing. I mean, it goes without saying that the reason we have this session is health tech startups will be essential in making progress on the SDGs, um, on health targets, and and you know we really appreciate the work that you do. And I think you made some great points in terms of how to scale it up. And hopefully this is a group that uh, can help support you in those goals. So thank you both again. Uh, it's one of the nice benefits of this virtual platform that we can dial in from different places around the world. And best of luck with everything you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you.